Good afternoon. Uh, today we are speaking with uh, Dr. Mohammed, who is a class of 2022 graduate. And uh, Dr. Mohammed, um, welcome and thank you for your time today. And could you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your where you matched in residency? Of course. Um, I'm originally from Canada in a town called Ajax, which is just outside of Toronto. So I went to school at the undergraduate, uh, the University of Toronto, did my undergraduate degree in neuroscience because I always knew that I wanted to be a doctor. I always wanted to be a surgeon specifically. And I was lucky enough to match into orthopedic surgery this year. Oh, that, and that's great. And um, can you tell us a little bit about what orthopedic surgery might be for some of our current or, or for prospective students out there that may be unfamiliar with this specialty? Yeah, um, it's something that I didn't really know about until a few years ago as well. It's essentially surgery on the musculoskeletal system, mainly on the bones, but there can be some muscle or soft tissue coverage as well. But essentially you are taking care of patients who have fractures, patients who need joint replacements or uh, kids who aren't having their bones grow correctly. So there's a wide variety of things that orthopedists can cover, but at the core of it, it's all about taking care of the bones. Absolutely. And we're very proud of you. You're actually the first uh, orthopedic surgery match at UMHS. And I know everybody's really excited and it must feel great to, to be the first. Um, yeah, it's really been a long road. I mean, I technically graduated at the end of 2016. Okay. I have been pursuing orthopedic surgery since then because, like I said, I didn't know about this specialty for a long time. I did my general surgery rotation in New York and managed to do a couple ortho cases there. But even still, as you said, there's nobody that's matched in our school from to orthopedic surgery. And when you see those things, you kind of get in that mindset of, well, maybe this isn't something that I can get into. It's a very competitive field and IMGs are typically not accepted at a lot of programs. So for me, it was disheartening because, you know, you want to follow your dreams, but it makes it so much more difficult when you don't see any paths in front of you. But I was lucky enough to do an orthopedic surgery research rotation, and I found myself a mentor there, Dr. Delanois, and he helped guide me through this whole process. And we set up a plan, talked to a lot of people, and I was able to grow my network. I did a lot of research. I published many papers and the orthopedic field. And that ultimately led me to where I am now at Wake Forest in North Carolina, where they have a physician scientist track. This is a seven year program essentially where you do two years of PhD work and then you reapply to get into the residency program. And so I don't think that anyone really knows about this. And I certainly didn't think that I had a chance at getting into this field at all until I talked to the right people and was able to find the path that worked best for me, which was the one going to Wake Forest. Oh, wow. So were you actually, you said that you matched into something else, like you, you actually graduated in 2016, you said? Yes, but I didn't match. So I applied for the match. I tried to do gen surgery as my first choice because we obviously have some success there. And although I got interviews, I ultimately didn't match there. And I think part of it is being IMG, but part of it was also being Canadian at the time needing a visa to get into a lot of these programs, which held me back. And as hard as it was to go through that, I think it was the best thing that happened to me because that allowed me to pursue what I really wanted, which is orthopedic surgery. And it set me on this path that now I can sit here talking to you about being the first UMHS grad to get into ortho. Absolutely. And it show, really sounds like perseverance and persistence has paid off and that's we're, we're so proud of you. And um, would you mind telling us a little bit about why initially uh, you decided on attending UMHS over other medical schools? Of course. Um, as some people will know, the Canadian medical system is very difficult to get into. There's only a handful of schools in each province. And while I did fairly well in my undergrad, I had a couple struggles in a couple classes. And I think that ultimately didn't let me get into the Canadian medical schools. And so looking at options that were available to me, I 
knew that I had to be a doctor and I wasn't going to stop. And <laughs> UMHS came up as one of those options to go to the Caribbean and do medical school. And out of the ones that I'd researched, I felt like UMHS put the most effort into trying to answer my questions and trying to make me feel comfortable going to another country to study medicine. And so that was really what swayed me to be to choosing this school and saying, okay, they seem like they care about their students and they're going to set you up to be successful. So took the chance and and we get down in St. Kitts and here I am. <laughs> wow, wow, I'm so glad to hear that. And was there any uh, professors or staff members, whether they were in St. Kitts or New York or uh, Maine or even on your clinical rotations, anybody that you want to give a shout out to of thanks that, that really helped you or inspired you along the way? There were a lot of great professors on the island. Many of them, it's funny, thinking back that you could tell there was a difference in the way they taught and sure. quite a few of them. So Dr. Mungley was a great professor. Yes. Uh, there was uh, Dr. Cotwell, Dr. Doherty, and several of them, Dr. Jalan. He, they were all really great at okay. giving the foundations that you needed to succeed for step one. And then moving on to the other side of things, I, found that there were a few key staff members, some of them have gone now, but Dr. or Mr. Jonathan Timen has been tremendously helpful yes. even after leaving the school and graduating. He's the person that I always go to to ask for any help with my transcripts or send. <laughs> He's been wonderful in helping me with my postgraduate journey to get into residency. Well, that's uh, Jonathan in academic affairs in New York. Okay, yeah, I know Jonathan uh, very well. Yeah, he's yeah, they're great. Uh, Jonathan and Patrick are great and really helpful to the students, you know, as far as uh, helping them match and that sort of thing. Um, uh, excellent. So is there anything specific about your UMHS medical education that helped you reach your goals that you can think of offhand? Um, I think one of the things that helped me to get to where I am now is the clinical rotation structure. I know that when I was going through it, we were sent all over the country. We didn't necessarily have a specific hub to go to, but I tried to finish as many as I could in one area. And that ended up being in Baltimore in Maryland. And the hospital that we were contracted with there had a ton of different rotations and being able to work directly with the coordinator there, who was easily able to facilitate with the school, helped me to complete a lot of things there, but that also gave me the opportunity to do the research rotation that I did, because I wouldn't have found out if the coordinator hadn't said, hey, you know, you need four more weeks to finish your education. There's this research rotation that's four weeks that can start at any time. And I've heard students do well, they publish when they go through there, and so, being able to be flexible, but having those relationships that UMHS had built was one of the things that allowed me to succeed. Wow, that's great to hear. And what are some of the things that interest you the most about the specialty of orthopedic surgery? With orthopedics, it is really the immediate impact that you can have on a patient's life. Sure. Um, just being able to fix a broken bone and hearing from the attendings that I work with here that these patients are so immediately grateful that someone who was in a lot of pain is able to suddenly feel less pain. Somebody who's had joint mobility problems, as soon as you replace it, they're able to get up and start walking again so quickly. And for me, that was a big reason why I got into medicine in the first place, is that I wanted to have that hands-on experience of impacting a patient's life and helping them for the better. And as great as all the other specialties are, I knew for me, I had to be a surgeon because that is where I would have the most direct impact on improving lives. Excellent. And uh, shifting gears a little bit, uh, can you talk a little bit about um, any advice that you might have for um, UMH students about um, the residency match process? It, it sounds like you really were persistent and you really, I think, will be an inspiration to a lot of people or any, anything, any advice that you might have for people that are struggling to match? It is very difficult once you have it matched once. Right. And going through that cycle several times can be disheartening. 
but the most important thing is to believe in yourself and to not stop trying. If you want something and you can see a path towards it, it's important to keep pushing forward. But even more than that, what I realized going through it was it's not necessarily how good you are. It's also about who you know. Of course. So if you're having a difficult time, you should early on try and find mentors or people in residency programs or different hospital systems that can be a sponsor for you. And I say sponsor, not mentor, because I've been learning about this, but mentors are people you can talk to and will give you advice. But a sponsor is somebody who will go to bat for you. Somebody's going to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I think this person's awesome. And I think that's something that a lot of students don't necessarily realize, especially trying to get into some of these more competitive fields. Sure. My advice is if you can find your sponsor early on, then you will set yourself up to have the most success. Wow. And that's 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 so great to know. And um, could you talk a little bit about some of your goals for your residency uh, in an orthopedic surgery? Some of my goals would be to get through, of course, first of all. <laughs> right. But overall, I want to become the best surgeon that I can be. And that includes learning as much as I can, scoring well in the in-service training exams, but also doing the other side of things. So I obviously have a strong research background, so I'd like to continue doing research and developing my skills in that. I'd like to finish my PhD while I'm going through it because I've already started and I'm on my way and I should be able to graduate in the next couple of years. But making time for that is important. But also being able to, one, develop myself, but also help mentor other people because it's not an easy journey and I wouldn't want anyone to have to go through what I had to go through. To right. And so using all the things that I've been able to do to make the path easier for somebody else. Yeah. And I, and it's sure that there's, it's a lot, we get a lot and there's more and more women, which I think is so great. And um, I'm sure people could definitely use your help. Um, is there um, anything um, I wanted to talk briefly about? Um, I've asked everybody about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic because I think um, it really has changed the landscape. And um, do you feel that uh, COVID-19 has um, brought any more um, understanding to doctors in the public eye? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? I think it that's an interesting question because in the beginning, Yes, there was a lot more attention to doctors and the struggles that they were going through. But because this pandemic has dragged on for so long, right. it's also made it turn the corner. And so you start seeing people going against doctors who are trying to say, get vaccinated, protect yourselves. But because it's been so long, people are like, you can't tell me what to do. Huh. And so I think it's been interesting to see the change from how they were celebrated as healthcare heroes to now being controlling of some patients who don't want to go through with these protective measures. And I think it's good for prospective students to see both sides of that, because you can be the best person in somebody's eyes, but then you do one bad thing and then all of a sudden you're the bad guy. And you have to be prepared for both situations, because no matter what, at the end of the day, your job is to help take care of people. And this pandemic has shown us that as difficult as it can be, it's really you that has to make the sacrifice and you have to find your reasons to get through it. So I think the public is going to change their opinions one way or the other, but we can kind of get a sense of how things change depending on what the current climate looks like. Right. And what do you think are some, like one takeaway that, especially for med students, that you think that uh, med students in general might have learned or you have might have learned during the pandemic? What's one thing you can think of offhand? Well, I was doing research for the most part of the pandemic, working on right. my PhD, doing my research fellowship. And one thing that I think a lot of us learned is that a lot of the work we do can be done remotely, which is not just uh, productive, but it's safer for a lot of things. Sure. And I think that in the terms of medicine, there is an avenue now where you can open up to telemedicine and you can do office visits or conduct some uh, very primary things through video calls and it makes people more accessible. So I think that's something that we need to take forward 
in their future is that we can make we can accommodate people and make things accessible to them. Absolutely. And um, what is your, you said you're getting at, you're studying for a PhD. Um, what is your PhD? What area is that in again? So here at Wake, I'm in the molecular medicine and translational science uh, wow. PhD track. So in biomedical sciences, but been doing that for the last couple of years, working on basic science experiments to basically understand more about our osteoarthritis for my specific project as it relates to my future career. But more than that, like it's been great because I've also been able to obtain a master's in studies of law at the same time. At wow. Wake. So I've been very busy trying to <laughs> keep myself integrated in this field because where I see myself in the future is being a surgeon, but also trying to help others impacting the law and the policies that come to doctors, but also the understanding how the patient side of things are affected with the basic science. Wow, that's like so amazing. You're so accomplished. It's like, wow, I, you're, such a, <laughs> you're such an inspiration. You really are. Um, let's see, is there is there anything else that you would like to add about orthopedic surgery, or about UMH in general? Um, I think the main thing is that orthopedic surgery can seem like a daunting field. I know right. early on, I had a couple friends be like, oh, you have the personality to fit into orthopedics. <laughs> but I never saw it myself because I've never seen anybody like myself there. And it can be a bit scary trying to break into a field. But I think we're at a time now where there are more people that are getting into this field that are very diverse. I mean, my class is going to be four women. Wow. Which is the most that That's it's amazing. in our program. And so I think that it's trying to find those people that look like you and imagine yourself there because if you can see it then you can do it and i know i had a problem with that in the beginning but luckily i was able to make that change to see myself in this position and ultimately end up here well we're, we're so proud of you. you you really are a trailblazer and i think it's so important for women and people of color um you know to enter medicine and just why wow, you're just so accomplished well um I really want to thank you so much for your time today. I think you've made us all a little bit smarter uh, whenever it comes to orthopedic surgery. Um, I thank you so much for your time and uh, I wish you the best of luck in your residency. All the best to you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed, and uh, have a great day. Okay. 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 Take care.